benefit of the Free State Project, right? Are, is this going to look good for us? Is this going to get our message out there? Is this going to be a distraction? Those are all considerations that we um, that we take into account, and we have to think about, you know, what are the the costs and benefits of um, you know of this particular relationship? And so we do that, and that's not to say there isn't some scope for legitimate disagreement about how we come down on some of those decisions, but that's something that we very much do consider. Um, is you know to what extent do these can we um, you know tolerate the uh, the perception that we might be endorsing say this this organization this person these, um, that we're working with? Yeah, there's um, there's another application of that actually that Jason didn't mention, and that that is what about people who present at Free State Project events? And we had a problem at one point. Um, you know, you you can sign up as a Free Stater, and then if Somehow we discover, for example, that you're a vocal advocate promoting racism. Um, then we would remove you as a Free State Project participant. Well, uh, there was somebody who came and, and presented. I was actually a performer, a musical performer, at a Free State Project event. There, that coincidentally was par a participant that we discovered was racist and removed them on those grounds, but it caused us to pause and say, well, wait a minute, they're non-participants, people who are not participants speak at Free State Project events. And what do we want to do about that? And so the board adopted a policy that they would be held to the, those same standards. That's a fairly low bar. Don't advocate violence, racism, or bigotry. As far as organizations, I think, and, and I'm not on the board anymore, but I, I was for about 10 years, and we tended to take a little bit liberal, let's say, view that is uh, the benefit of the doubt, um, that if there was some controversy, we'd probably not be particularly strict about that, but uh, we certainly would not entertain the idea of supporting or um, substantially entangling with groups who would promote bigotry or violence or racism. And uh, there's, a, there's kind of a long history of why that is. Um, uh, awkwardly, libertarian movements have a tendency of attracting some people like that. So that can be true of organizations also, and we want to try to at least cut off the worst of that. And personally, my hope, whether it be organizations or individuals, my hope is that those who um, have, let's say, errors, I would call them errors, in their thinking or their tactics, you know, they're, they're not nice people, or they promote ideas that are unpopular, um, not just not just because they're um, controversial, but because they're agitating, or the way they do it is kind of offensive or whatever. Um, my hope is that those people who, who maybe don't promote racism, violence, or bigotry, but are just unsavory, would eventually mature, and the organizations or individuals would, would um, move away from that kind of activity. So, um, I, as far as I'm not aware, there wasn't an at least as of last December. There's not a formal policy that gives a kind of a uh, black and white description of when the Free State Project would, for example, not advertise or accept advertising from somebody else. Um, but the, I think the sense of the board would be, if you're way off the rails, we'll probably say this is not something that we support. And, and there, is, there is not a, I guess the formal policy is, you know, we don't endorse all of those things explicitly. But yeah, there's a perception issue sometimes. Do you have anything to add? Yeah, uh, I mean if the question is sort of about Free Talk Live, that's kind of the, <laughs> the implicit thing here. Uh, um, and and just, just, so that, just so that the cable access people know, the host of Free Talk Live is also videoing here, so, right. so uh, he can hear the yeah. discussion. So, and, and Ian should be able to confirm this, but the Free State Project actually doesn't um, uh, pay to advertise on Free Talk Live at this point. Any longer. Any longer. Um, we did for a long time, um, and uh, I, I'm not anti, I'm actually not anti Free Talk Live. I think, um, you know, Free Talk Live does a lot of good stuff. Um, you know, obviously, I've had some tactical disagreements with Ian on some issues, um, but the one thing you can say about uh, about Ian and Free Keen and that kind of uh, constellation of, of organizations here is that um, while some of the individuals involved with that have been at times rude or at times have done things that are kind of outlandish, um, they don't they don't use violence. They're very you know strict. They'll they'll never take anyone's rights away. They're not going to harm anybody else. And my view is that the stop. 
free keen folks need to realize that if they, if they want to reduce the temperature, if they want to reduce the outlandishness that, that, that they dislike uh, about, um, about that constellation of organizations, then they should just not give them attention. Because, um, you know, the, uh, you know these, these organizations, uh, they kind of, they, they thrive on that, that attention. That's, that's yeah, uh, attention. recruitment. Right, yeah, that's, it's part of the, it's part of the, um, the media kind of um, environment that, um, that, uh, that, that they want to create. So, um, we can have our legitimate disagreements about, um, uh, about tactics and, and how you, uh, how you engage with people and how, what, what types of issues you, you focus on. Um, but we should also keep things in perspective, and uh, I think that we, both sides can, can use some of that. Yeah, the, um, the Free State Project does not advertise on ISIS TV, uh, <laughs> and ISIS TV does not advertise at Free State Project events, so there's, so there's that. And there is a magnitude issue. I've been here for 11 years here in Keene now and have watched sort of things unfold and I've seen a mix of things. There are things that rub me the wrong way and I've been fairly vocal about that. Um, I started writing in the Keene Sentinel about it, maybe uh, letters, at least as far back as 2010 and and, uh, and probably earlier than that I started speaking at Free State Project events about that in 2006 that I have records of and, and maybe before informally um, and I think it's good to uphold higher standards, and that's not just with Free Keen, that would be with any kind of activism activity, uh, whether it be political or civil disobedience or whatever. Um, so yeah, there are some disagreements and there, there could be perception issues. One of the reasons that uh, we wanted to present this is to try to clarify the, the distinction between the two. And if things get too cozy, I don't know where that line is, but if things get too cozy with people who are doing truly bad things, for example, promoting bigotry, I think that we would draw the line. Now, I'm not on the board anymore, but the board uh, is reachable. They're real people, so you know, if anybody has an issue where they go, oh, man, this is a problem, the best thing to do would be to send that right straight to the board. There's two board members in the room right now um, that could hear issues like that. And I think that's a very uh, good thing to bring up, and I appreciate the question. How can you reach the board? Yeah, um, I, s I tried to send you an email to that address and I'm not sure it got to you, so maybe you should answer that question. So board at freestateproject.org uh, will go to uh, one of our board members. Uh, okay. And so and it will be passed on to all of us. So that's now to one, not all of them. Yes, yeah, so okay. it'll go to one, but then it'll get forwarded all right. to all of us. So board um, at freestateproject.org. Yeah. Send your cards and letters. Great. And, and also, uh, 